Before you download the Track and Trace app, you should consider what I am about to show you. This is not my opinion, it's merely facts. To control coronavirus, testing and tracing must become a new way of life. The Track and Trace system that's being marketed and sold to the public as an NHS system is contracted to and run by a number of private companies. Here are a few facts you may want to know about some of the companies involved. Faculty, an AI company involved in the development of the contact tracing app and conducting data modeling to help government officials respond to the pandemic. We help organizations build capability in artificial intelligence. The value of artificial intelligence is gonna be when it can be used by governments, when it can be used by companies, by hospitals, by schools. We're really focused in bringing this technology to the real world. The project is based on a secretive contract signed last December to develop an NHS AI lab with faculty. The government refuses to say how many companies it invited to bid for it and the Department of Health won't give us any details about what the original contract was for. Faculty had no track record in the NHS beyond one, project managing staff's time in a clinic. It remains unclear why it was selected to transform the NHS through AI. Some say the link is Mr Dominic Cummings. After Cummings was appointed Chief Advisor to Boris Johnson, Ben Warner, a faculty data scientist who worked with him on the Vote Leave project, was hired as an advisor to Number 10 on data and technology. Warner just happens to be the brother of Mark Warner, the co-founder and chief executive of faculty. I'd say it's just a coincidence if it wasn't that a private company owned by Dominic Cummings paid more than a quarter of a million pounds to faculty. He has declined to explain the reason for the payments and faculty also declined to say what they were for. The company's shareholders include two current and former conservative ministers. Another company involved is Palantir, a software data company with some controversy. Its role has recently been extended and gone beyond an original focus on ventilators to also include other care during the pandemic. The contract with the NHS does indicate that Palantir is allowed to negotiate its own arrangements on intellectual property with third parties going forward, which third parties are not specified. Under the cover of this pandemic, billions of public money handed to faceless corporations, including Tory-linked firms, without competition or transparency, without democratic accountability, or any accountability, for that matter, to the public. And it's money that should have been invested in our National Health Service, that should have left a legacy for the British people by building up properly funded public services that we can all rely on in the future, but instead it was siphoned off. £12 billion pounds has been allocated for test and trace. Much of that's being squandered on outsourcing giants like Serco, which not only have records of failure, but been fined in recent years for ripping off the public purse. Now, the Leader of the House is a proud advocate of outsourcing and privatisation, but maybe even he thinks it's gone too far when these companies are putting lives at risk. So will the Leader of the House condemn the private sector companies undermining our test and trace system? And will he grant a debate on this? No. No. Serco. Serco was contracted to train, recruit and manage contract tracers, as well as running test centres. But at this early stage, it has been forced into a humiliating apology after it shared the email addresses of 296 tracers by accident. Serco has fallen at the first hurdle and failed to even keep its own people's data secure. The choice of Serco to handle this project is adding insult to injury. The company was fined £19.2 million last summer 
for fraud and false accounting over the Ministry of Justice's electronic tagging service for released prisoners where one of six tags they charged the government for didn't exist, resulting in overcharging of £50 million. Two of their former executives were also criminally charged over the affair. The Panama Papers leaked unearthed more dirt on Serco's track record. They referenced allegations against Serco which included breaching responsibilities of the handling of nuclear waste, manipulating results to show it met NHS targets, covering up sexual abuse of immigrants, plus horrendous reports from prisons it ran in New Zealand and Australia. Serco is everywhere. If there's a government department for it, there's probably a Serco service for it. Except Serco call them markets. But let's try and give you a sense of the scale of this thing. They are the largest air traffic controller in the world. They run half of London's traffic light system and an REF base. Serco works in six sectors of public service supply, transport, health, defense, immigration, justice, and citizen services. Yes, a single company is responsible for most of the transport, health, immigration, prison, and citizen services in the UK. Just in case you missed it the first time I said it. They run all seven detention centers in Australia, and it is considered the largest prison operator in the UK. In one of their prisons, a 14-year-old hanged himself after being assaulted by Serco guards, which was the youngest ever recorded death in custody. But that doesn't mean they are not good with kids, as they run all the state schools in Bradford. You see, they are a giant of a company, and that's why we trust them to keep us safe. Serco has run the UK's ballistic missile system since it was initially outsourced in 1964, as well as the entire UK nuclear arsenal from creation to decommissioning. And they're involved at RAF Menwith Hill, the secretive signals intelligence gathering centre that's thought to be involved in GCHQ's Tempora Dragnet project. So it could be that they're helping the government collect data on you. As you are watching this, Serco continues to secure contracts around the world to build prisons, run military bases and border protection. The most egregious example being the eye-watering 12 billion of public money handed to private companies, including Serco, for this failing test and trace system. Conservative Baroness and business executive Baroness Harding appointed as the head of Track and Trace, Serco's CEO, the brother of a former Tory MP, and Tory MPs on the boards of companies winning contracts. And if you've got a problem with any of this, well, why not take it up with the government's anti-corruption champion, Dido Harding's husband and a Tory MP. The whole thing stinks. Serco's CEO, Robert Soames, grandson of Winston Churchill and brother of Conservative MP Nicholas Soames. Rupert was trapped in a web of lies recently. He was caught tweeting aboard a sleeper train from London to Scotland during its lockdown. The company's media arms statement said, he fiercely defends his decision to show solidarity with frontline workers. Those words might have worked if Mr. Soames had not been photographed three hours later on a boat near Loch Nevis. It turns out he has a country estate there where he employs three staff. Responding to the new evidence, he said, the purpose of the visit was to conduct essential job interviews with candidates for the position of resident manager. Wasn't this the same issue that forced Scotland's Chief Medical Officer Catherine Calderwood to resign? The excuse of conducting interviews for a non-key worker role is blatantly not valid, but I am not going to be petty about it. In the grand scheme of things, this is the least of my worries. There's widespread public concern that the government is in hoc 
these giant outsourcing companies. Concerns at Circle and the like aren't just ripping off the public, but they're putting lives in danger. So does the Secretary of State think that the public should be reassured or worried by the fact that Serco's former chief spin doctor is now his Minister for Health. For me, what matters is what works, because what works will save lives. And I will work with anyone, public or private sector, here or overseas, to gain an, any inch of ground against this disease. I thought you should know who is handling your data and the way it's being done. This is not just about the app. It's about private companies infiltrating our health systems and affecting government decision making, all shrouded in secrecy and without a debate with the people. If you are okay with this track record, then go ahead. Download the app that promises to save your life.